Besides the absurd material that we usually play, we like the weird ones, the technical ones. Once in a while, we do something that is slightly more delicate. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You remember when mixtapes were a thing? And for those of you who don't, that's okay, let me explain. A mixtape was a cassette tape, like this, where you would take your favorite CD, or your favorite cassette tape, and you compile a list of songs that you like. Sometimes you do this for a guy or a girl to impress them. Sometimes you'd make a road mix for a road trip. It sounds familiar though, doesn't it? It's our modern day playlist, isn't it? So yeah, of course you know what a playlist is. This was our playlist back when this is all we had, physical media, actual tangible, hold it in your hand, own it because it's yours, medium. Well, I wasn't always, I wasn't much for mixtapes. I never made a lot of mixtapes. However, as a huge Rush fan in high school, and yeah, I'm that old, I made my own mixtape, but I made my own compilation album with a theme. And that's why we're here today, to talk about Pulses. That's the name I gave it. And as you can see right here on the tape, it says Rush Pulses. And on the back, I wrote 18 Rush classics. And I have them numbered here, one through 18. And the theme of this album, most recently I heard Getty say this. Besides the absurd material that we usually play, we like the weird ones, the technical ones. Once in a while we do something that is slightly more delicate. As Getty described it, these are the more delicate songs, or some might call them slow songs. So yeah, they're definitely not love songs. Neil was never one for love songs. He even mentions that in Cold Fire. This isn't a love song. So that's, what not the, that's not what they are. These songs are, are slower songs, more delicate, if you will. Given that the mixtape of its time was the playlist of today, what I've done for this very video is created one. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, now Rush Pulses is in the modern age. It is a complete playlist and I've expanded upon it actually. I've gone up to 33 songs this time. So, and basically because of this, when I created that list, I was in high school. Roll the Bones was the latest album. The second, literally the week I got to college, Boom, counterparts, they're playing it on the air for the first time. We're losing our minds. New Rush, 1993, on the first year in college, and I could not wait to get that CD. So yes, counterparts came out. So my original playlist for Pulses only included up to Roll the Bones. So everything past that, that's kind of the mix that I've added to it, a second album. So now this is a double album. It is basically one entire 35 song, because there's two doubles in there, uh, 35 song playlist, but in all essence, yeah, it's a double album. So yeah, this is Rush Pulses, and I'm Loud Boy. Let's get into it. So the album starts off with Brune's Bane. Brune's Bane you can find on Exit Stage Left. Okay, this is the original CD, Exit Stage Left. And Brune's Bane was actually an instrumental, beautiful, that Alex played as a lead into the trees. So that's what it is. It's, a, it's an instrumental kind of um, prelude to the trees and then goes right into it in the concert. But it's called Brune's Bane. You won't find it on a studio album. It is, however, on Exit Stage Left. Beautiful song, that's track one. Track two, we skip all the way to Hold Your Fire. And on Hold Your Fire is a song called Tai Shan. I believe probably inspired by Neil's journeys to China. You know, he used to ride his bicycle. He wrote, you know, of course, a couple books about that and, and different blogs and stories. But anyway, he rode through China and that was definitely an inspiration on uh, several of the songs, both rhythmically and lyrically on Hold Your Fire. So this song is Tai Shan. Next up, we skip all the way to Roll the Bones. So on Roll the Bones, one of my two favorite songs, I mean, Roll the Bones, so underrated, kind of underrated. It should be highly, more highly rated. Roll the Bones is an amazing album. I think a lot of people hear the title track 
and tend to sort of dismiss it if they don't get Rush, they don't truly love Rush, they hear the rap, they think it's a joke. That's my guess. And they're completely wrong, aren't they? Because a couple of amazing tracks on there, the first of which is Heresy, where and it talks about the cost of war and of human lives and, and all those wasted years and who will pay. Beautiful song. And this is why I keep my original CDs, by the way, on the back. My very first Rush concert. That's right, Roll the Bones, Worcester Mass, 1991. So yeah, December 10th, 1991, saw Rush for the first time. I was up kind of to the right above the stage. Um, yeah, and it put, I was on Alex's side, looking down on Alex, just, you know, tearing it up on stage. So yes, concert, that's Roll the Bones. Next up, guys, we have Different Strings. Of course, this is off of Permanent Waves. Let me find that one here. Here we go. Beautiful song. Love Different Strings. Um... Different eyes see different things, different hearts beat on different strings. Beautiful song, comes right after Entree New and right before one of my favorite Rush songs of all time, Natural Science. It kind of bridges the gap there. So, off of Permanent Waves, The Pass. So again, jumping to the future, of course to the album Presto. This song deals with uh, teen suicide. Really uh, kind of a serious song and a great song and it talk, you know, about wasting your life and, and, and what have you done, uh, those who would commit such a, a sad act. And that's a very real problem we still have here in America. So, everywhere. Um, Rush, Presto, The Pass, Lakeside Park, live, is our next one. This is on Caress of Steel. I'll just show you Caress of Steel. If, um, of course, this is uh, track number four, six on here. Lakeside Park, off of Caress of Steel. Not my favorite album, but Lakeside Park, beautiful. And I like listening to Fountain once in a while, so. All right, after that, guys, we have Losing It. Oh, beautiful song. Uh, this song is on here twice, by the way. I have the original version uh, in the, you know, this, this earlier segment of it. And this is off of Signals. There you go. Uh, of course, the dog sniffing the hydrant, a theme that, of course, came back. Dog gears, right? Um, one sniff of the hydrant and the answer is automatic. Point is, I, I love that kind of a, a nod to signals. But yeah, yeah, on here, track seven, losing it. Beautiful violin work, emotion detector. This is on power windows. Okay. On the playlist on Spotify, power windows. Okay. And emotion detector is actually uh, next to the last track. The last track is uh, Mystic Rhythms. Uh, another great song off of Power Windows. After that, we have Tears. This song stands out because what is this known for? Come on. This album, of which I have my original cassette tape. That's right. This is my original cassette tape that I purchased, my very first Rush purchase. I now own probably seven to eight copies of 2112 across vinyl and Blu-ray and DVD, you know, for the different mixes, a couple of the different CDs, the 40th anniversary, but this is my original. This sucker, I, I found it recently. I found a box of tapes and I was so stoked. I'm like, are you kidding me? 2112 and Rush saved me from pop music. It's that simple. I was listening to the top 40 before then. I didn't know better. Pure ignorance, but the second I heard this, everything changed. Everything changed. So thankful to Rush and so thankful to 2112. And the track on here is track five, Tears, right after Lessons and right before Something for Nothing. Next up, High Water. Cool song. I love how he talks about water and life and, and connecting the two. Anyway, a beautiful song, last track, track 10 on here. On my list is track 10. How beautiful is that? So that's on uh, Hold Your Fire. After that, guys, we have Magical on Farewell to Kings. Let's find that, there we go. Magical, beautiful little song, Farewell to Kings. And so after Mag Magical, one of my favorite Rush songs again, it's impossible to name a rush, your favorite. You know, if you're a real fan, making a list like, hey, what's your top five? What's your top 10? No, I can't do that. I can tell you some of my favorites, but I'm not gonna make a list. It is impossible. 
I can't name an era. I can't name an album. I love Rush. I love album one, The Clockwork Angels. Enough said. That's, that's kind of my take. All right, so next up, guys, we have Roll the Bones. On Roll the Bones is Bravado. Mm. Love Bravado. Love it. The lyrics in this song, powerful, poignant, beautiful. Some of Neil Peart's best, in my humble opinion. Next up, Mystic Rhythms, Power Windows, the last track on Power Windows. This was somewhat of a release. I mean, this was released for them, I'll, I'll, and they had a music video for it. So, in fact, it's on my, uh, my Rush Chronicles uh, DVD. So the point is, yeah, Mystic Rhythms, great song. Beautiful ryth uh, rhythms uh, by Neil on that. So, uh, you know, playing his uh, electric drums. All right, Available Light. It's on Presto. Available Light, last track. Beautiful. The drum fill in this song, amazing. Um, the lyrics, chasing light around the world. I want to stand in Available Light. Beautiful, beautiful song. Love this song. Next up, Cinderella Man. Farewell to Kings. Cinderella Man. You know it. You probably like it. Okay, Farewell to Kings. Cinderella Man. Rivendell. Off of Fly By Night. Of course, Neil loved Tolkien as much as I did. I do. He loved Lord of the Rings, to the best of my knowledge. And, of course, Rivendell is about that, right? The the, the beautiful mystic home of the uh, the High Elves. Uh, that we saw so beautifully portrayed in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, didn't we? In Fellowship of the Ring. That's where they had their meeting. That's where they formed the fellowship in Rivendell. Well, Rush wrote a song about that long ago on Fly By Night. It came out in 75. The year after I was born. Yes, I'm old. Thank you. All right, next up, guys, we have Second Nature. And let's see. Yep, Second Nature. Hold Your Fire ought to be Second Nature. I mean, the places where we live, let's talk about the sensibly or not insensitive. Great song, great lyrics, beautiful stuff. Big classic. Everyone knows that our next one is the original Close of the Heart is on Farewell to the Kings. But the final track in that first one, right? The original, where's my tape? The original Pulses, okay? The final track is Close, Closer to the Heart live. Of course, if you're a Rush fan, you know. They've played Closer to the Heart a billion times, and it's on a ton of their live releases. Uh, I chose something pretty recent, actually. I chose off of this, different stages, okay? Great album, great rendition, uh, great version of Closer to the Heart. That's the live version here. So that's track 19. That kind of wraps up that first section, okay? That my original pulses. Then I added to it. I couldn't stop there. I couldn't stop with Roll the Bones. I wanted to go beyond that. And plus, take a look back at the catalog, and there's a wobble of tracks I grabbed as well. Let's get right into it. One of those, again, going back, and I believe it is on... Yep. Power Windows. Middletown Dreams. Love this song. Love this song. In, in some ways, there are verses in here that mirrored my experience as a kid watching a friend of mine go on to quote unquote rise to be a star if you will my friend did that he became a professional saxophone player we both played sax in the day and i kind of likened it to that because i never went on for fame and fortune like he did and i guess i saw myself in that lyric a little bit oh i i love middleton dreams just for lyrically especially it's a beautiful song too of course Next up, we have Nobody's Hero. Nobody's Hero is on, remember, impossible to name a favorite Rush album. But when I got to, to school, to, to college, and I heard Counterparts, there's something about the magic of going off to school, that independence, that transformative time in my life of growing up and stuff. The songs on this played to that. The songs on Counterpart still mean something to me, and I can't ever get tired of this album. It is clearly one of my favorites and will always be. I love Counterparts. There's so many amazing tracks. And my friends and I had a band 
Um, I have had a couple bands through the years. I, I sang and I played sax and my friend played guitar. Point. You know what a band is. And we did Stick It Out. Dream come true. That was like sophomore year. And uh, we played Stick It Out as you know, just one of our covers that we did. Dream come true. Having been a Rush fan at that point for 10 to 12 years, getting to sing and play a Rush song uh, was amazing. So, Nobody's Hero, track four on here, and on here, it's uh, it's in that second part of our list. Next up, Roll the Bones, Ghost of a Chance. We can find someone who love to love and make it last. Yes, uh, I've always loved that CD. Isn't that cool? All right. Back when we had cool things that you could actually hold on to. Point is, yeah, off of Roll the Bones. And by the way, before we leave the good old counterparts here, if I didn't show it to you, under the disc, and there's my counterpart. Okay? My counterpart uh, concert ticket. Oh, amazing stuff. So, yes, of course, we're, we're talking about now Ghost of a Chance. Boom. Uh, Roll the Bones. Everyday Glory. All right, last track. Love that song. Love it. I'm talking about the, the people's personal lives, people in who are normal people rising to an everyday glory, that kind of thing, and how we each can do it. That's what I get from it. Uh, the overall theme of it, but uh, everyday glory. Love that song. Next up, resist. Oh, love resist. Test for echo. By the way, back of Test for Echo, concert ticket. Love keeping them in here, right? I always know where they are. They're with the album in which they toured. Anyway, so yeah, Test for Echo. Saw that tour as well, of course. Next up, off of Vapor Trails, is how it is. Of course, original Vapor Trails and Extra Crispy. No, this is the remix version. Off of Clockwork Angels. And here we go. Yes, their masterpiece, the final album. And on this album, of course, is uh, the song that we're talking about, which is Wish Them Well. All you gotta do is wish them well. Great song, great theme, great lesson for life, right? Dust off your feet and, and leave. You know, I wish you well, buddy. You know what I mean? It's, uh, and anyway, I think we all know someone to which we should do that. Next up is Ghost Rider. Come on, Ghost Rider. Instant classic. And off of, of course, Vapor Trails. I just had it here. <laughs> oh, we're having fun. All right, yep. Off of Vapor Trails, Ghost Rider. So personal. It's a Neil story, okay? Um, I've got the book right here. It's my second copy. My dad kept the last copy. My dad's a pretty recent convert to Rush. I, I went 20 something years as a massive Rush fan. It was only within the past four to five years, more than that. Point is, he became a Rush fan and then I got to bring him to R40. That was a culmination of, I mean, it was like perfect uh, a moment because I brought him and my wife to Rush's final tour for me, my final Rush show. It's in Boston, R40 tour but I got to bring my dad and my wife. And knowing that he especially appreciated, my wife does like Rush. She's a female, you know what Alex says about Rush fans, but she did really like it. And she recorded a lot of amazing video for me, some of it, which is on my channel, in fact. I, you know, kind of cut it all together, our two video from phone videos. Halo Effect, okay? Halo Effect, another, I believe, pretty personal song. And what I've done is I've grouped together, maybe you can suss it out, Somewhere in the middle, final third of this list, okay, if you look at it, there's sort of a theme. And it kind of tracks, to the best of my ability, lyrically, what Neil went through, overcame, and gained back. Of course, when he met, met Carrie, and they had baby Olivia, and um, anyway, the two ladies back in his life. This is part of that whole thematic thing. In that vein, of course, is off of Vapor Trail, Sweet Miracle. Vapor Trails was such a personal album to Neil, and as he put it, I had to write about these things. I just had to. I mean, come on, you go through that. 
what is it, 50, 60,000 miles on the road on his motorcycle, just wandering in the massive landscapes of nature. And then he finds Carrie, right? The end of the rainbow. The point is, and he got his life back, if you, if you will. Okay, I mean, the loss is still there. But what he got at the end, though, so beautiful. So beautiful what he got, for lack of a better word, back. If anyone deserved it, it was Neil. So I'm just really thankful for that. All right, so that was a sweet miracle. Next one is Hope. Come on. Following that up, Hope, a beautiful instrumental. And that is on Snakes and Arrows. I actually have a couple. I have two. There were a lot of copies of Snakes and Arrows, weren't there? Of course, I got my original in the whole cardboard phase here. And there should be Snakes and Arrows. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I believe I saw them in either Houston or Dallas. Uh, whatever the Woodlands Pavilion is. I think it might be outside of Houston or Austin. Ah, who the heck knows? It was in Texas. So my friend lives down in Texas. So I went to see uh, Rush with them down there. And then, of course, this uh, kind of box set version. And I have one more, too. There were a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of copies of Snakes and Arrows. Um, Rush really did it up on that one. So that's Hope. That's Alex's beautiful instrumental. Man. Alex is just... Oh. I mean, they all are. Getty blows my mind. He's the maestro. Alex is, I mean, he can play something so hard and rock and, and just beautiful. Like, but then he can play something so melodic and beautiful and, and, and soft and touching. And, and it touches you emotionally and, and musically at the same time. Anyway, that's Hope. Losing It. I already mentioned it earlier. Of course, Losing It is uh, on Signals. Okay. Uh, but it is also... On, uh, this is the one I mentioned before, the R40 uh, live tour. I just, I can't find them anymore. All right, guys, I have like a massive stack of CDs, right? I mean, and I have more over here. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to show them the CDs as I go. I give up at this point. Okay, so I'm just going to, you're going to see the playlist, okay? As a reminder, yes. Spotify, the link is in the description. If you guys can play the, my entire uh, 35 song uh, track list and, 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 and playlist for uh, Pulses. We're wrapping this up and we're coming home, guys. We're almost done. So here we go. Working them angels, snakes and arrows, carve away the stone. I love that song. Love that song. Um, there's something about the last songs of, of Rush albums. I can't explain it. I should perhaps do a video about it. Two, because it deserves it, versions of the final track on Clockwork Angels and the final track of Rush's career, of Neil's lyrical, lyric writing, playing his drums for Rush. The Garden. Man, no better song no better song could there be to be the final track of this album, the final track of a 40 plus years, you know, with Neil, the final track of 20 albums, all those years, the garden. If you don't know them, look at the lyrics. If you don't know anything about Neil's life, read. But if you know those two things, and you know the story of Clockwork Angels, you know what Neil's been through, you know his thoughts on life, his perspective about the world, you know where he's coming from. The fact that it, these are his final words, it, lyrically, mind-blowing. The fact that these are, <laughs> the garden, are his final lyrics on the last album words can't, exp and can't describe it. I won't go into it. I'm already on the verge of tears right now. There's two versions. There's a live version from R40. Of course, they had the string ensemble with them. And then, of course, I have the final track of this Pulses playlist is The Garden, which I thought nothing could be more appropriate, not only to the theme of these more delicate songs, as Getty put it, but also to their career, and everything I just mentioned there. The garden, and there is no other way to end this list. What started off 
20 something years ago with a simple cassette tape. I wrote on it by hand with pen. I wrote this by hand. In fact, it looks like I put a sticker from a video tape. <laughs> when I, when, I would record everything as a kid, right? I'm a huge audio video guy, have been since high school, junior high. And I would sneak videotape. We'd go to the grocery store for food, right? We're just trying to feed our family. Now, I would sneak videotapes into the cart every time. And my mom would find them as she's checking out the groceries and kind of just shake her head. Because, you know, because I would record everything. Everything. You should see the boxes of VHS tapes that I have. Amazing. Like original broadcasts of Living Color playing uh, Cult of Personality and MTV. Uh, it's that kind of stuff because I, I love Living Color. Interviews with Dream Theater and stuff like that. I, I would record everything in my favorite TV shows. But I digress. So yes, I used a videotape sticker. I mean, this you don't get more homebrew than this, okay? My playlist from 20 something years ago on good old magnetic tape. Yeah, so this is Rush Pulses, guys. I can't thank you enough for being here. One Rush fan to all of you. I don't have to say the words that we know how much Rush means to us. We know how much Neil means to us, meant to us, still means to us. His loss, I've talked with you guys, I know how you feel, was monumental. For me, it was like losing a father, a father figure, if you, a mentor. I can't imagine what Getty and Alex have gone through, are going through, what Carrie and Olivia are going through. You know, arguably the four people that knew in Neil best and loved him the most and he loved them the most, I can't fathom. But just to us though, you spend four decades with a band 20 something albums, thousands upon thousands of words, books, both nonfiction and fiction. All right. You sum all that up and it's arguably more than some kids ever get from their real fathers. I, d I don't want to get off into that space too much. Okay. He's, he's not my dad. My dad's amazing and brilliant and, and I love him. However, I don't want it to be missed that I know what you feel. And I, uh, this album though, some of Neil's most potent and touching lyrics uh, of these more delicate songs. Um, I just, this is why I wanted to share it with you because I'm one of you and I love Rush and uh, this has been Rush Pulses. Well, guys, I'm Loud Boy. I thank you for being here and I hope you have a really good day.